They were taking bags. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. We'll give it just a few more minutes. We'll see people coming in and joining. So, give another minute or so. So just to give a quick update um, on the recorded webinars page, which I'll drop in here, I have I've added the training decks and there's a link up uh, for the first two trainings in the series, which were, you know, the general project options and then also the PPM subledger. Um, I, the GL one, I just re-recorded Shruti's piece because I know there was some um, some audio issues so that I, I will have that. Put together today and hopefully posted by end of day so that if you wanted to go back and watch the general ledger one you can um today is like a really informal office hours there's no structure there's no um you know a, all service facilitator just for the sake of having one but <clears throat> really our preference is is i mean you can ask questions but it's really um this is meant to support so any questions that you have as a result or stemming from around the PPM subledger and then the general ledger as well. So that could be chart of accounts, it could be anything within those two sort of topics. Um, and we do have the subject matter experts here today. And we also have many of the fund managers who, who um, contributed the content and spoke to that during the webinars. So uh, what I would encourage is literally just turn off your mic, ask your question or turn on your mic, <laughs> ask your question. Um, and then we will just have, it'll be totally organic and the folks will uh, chime in. Um, the experts. So who has a question? Kick us off. Ooh, okay. So we have a question that says, I would like to know the best way to view recharges um, that hit my, that you bill. So I imagine from PPM billing um, that hit my ledger. I think I followed that. So let me let me re restate it again um, since I joined a minute late here. So all how do you see all of the various recharge expenses that you have been billed on your project? Does that sound like the same? Um, no, like I want to know the projects I'm billing out. Um, because they're submitted like via MCI or via the new RMP app. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, I'm submitting them, but then there's more steps after that. So how do I know once they're complete and get like a transaction number or a confirmation number and see it on my ledger and the customer's ledger or their other unit's ledger? Okay, so um, I'm looking to see who we have from GA on the line. Hello. Ah, there we go. <laughs> So um, I just wanted, I think there's two parts to that, Rebecca. And so Melissa, I'm, I'm glad you're here. You can chime in um, with the details I'm missing. So yeah. once you submit that, Rebecca, and it gets processed, you should get confirmation of that being processed, I, I think, through that, that ticket that you've submitted. So that would be kind of that first step that you know it's completed. Is that right, well, Melissa? 
let me clarify. If you're if you're updating through the RMP app, which everybody who's doing a recharge should be migrating to the RMP app yesterday. Um, but if you're up if you're uploading through the RMP app, you will get a a, a confirmation. I, I don't know if it's a report or an email, uh, but something does come to you to say that it has been processed. If you are uploading via a snow ticket, meaning you're submitting a file, I do not believe you are getting any kind of confirmation um, to that upload, which is exactly why you should be going through the RMP app. All right, great. Thanks. Excuse me. This is Janet. Can I chime in here for a minute? Hi, Janet. Yeah. Hi. Because I did the RMP just the other day for 142 Ooh. lines and upload, and I did not get any kind of notification about it. But what I did after I did the RMP is I went and looked at my credit account. And you know how you filter to look since it was March, I you know did a March filter, I did it on the expenditure code, and it showed immediately. And then I checked a couple of projects that I debited. Uh -huh. And those also showed too. So, so it was instant. Thank at you. At least okay. with an upload to the RMP of a, of a template that mm -hmm. I did. All right. But going back to the old way with the service and support, if I sent an MCI file, um, Camp Thatch was the person who would respond, right. would certainly say, okay, there's errors or your file has uploaded. Yeah. And then I would go check into Oracle and I could view it right. um, wherever I was debiting or crediting, I would spot check different places. But um, so there was a response from CAM for service and support. Once a file was processed, I just okay. double checked it in Oracle then right. I closed the ticket. But the RMP, I never got any kind of confirmation. You just saw that it was submitted. And then I just went and checked and I could see it. So I think you would then I, I I do believe there is some kind of report that should come back to you and potentially Janet it's only if there's errors that would come back to you so right not, well if there's an error it shows in the RMP fail okay. I had oh, some okay. fail oh, okay so I went and we corrected the funding source or whatever the error was or we saw that there was one that had an end date that hadn't been extended yet so that is still sitting in the RMP as failed but all the rest of them say submitted. So when we get the extension on that other one, I can go back into that failed and change, you know, and make it active and then resubmit it. Um, Janet? Yes. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm using the RMP right now and you can see things are submitted and it gives you a transaction number and then the things that are failed and you can edit them. But where did you go in... Um, PPM or in Oracle to see um, the credits and sort by expenditure code. Yeah, I went into the regular, the project, you know, the project costs uh -huh. for either the debit or the credit, whichever one I wanted to spot check. And okay. I just then filtered or in, in your case or the way that Kurt had said, you could get a copy and, you know, copy the batch number if yeah. you wanted to do it that way. I just used okay. the filter. Okay, and you so, put in your project number that you're receiving. Yeah, either that, you can look at credit. the credit side or you could look at, at a debit side if you know what projects you debited, right? Okay, okay. And you can filter it down or however you wanna look, but it's in the PPM project costs. PPM project costs, okay, thank you. In addition, you could use the same sorts of searches with the, um, report on reports.ucsd.edu, the project cost detail report. Thanks, Janet and Rebecca. That's a great conversation. Um, so there is a question in the chat about the RMP app. So all, all of you doing recharges should be part of, you should have been heard from Kurt Griscones. He's, he's trying to onboard everybody onto the RMP app. Um, if you are not part of that group, can you, <laughs> um, who's laughing? Is that actually Kurt? <laughs> Um, so I, I thought he was doing it unit by unit, Melissa, and I think he only did SIO and then now he's starting on health sciences. I don't think oh. he's doing everyone at once. Okay. Then that's the answer. See, you guys are great crowdsourcing. Um, so Jessica, maybe you guys are up next. 
So I guess, can I encourage folks that have questions or want to know more about it? And, and I only say that I'll try to see if Kurt is available to join, but so we also have, and I know this is not like my standard answer, but we do have the COP, the recharge community of practice. Yes. If yes. somebody wants to just drop in there, what's the, maybe like the, um, the, the, we'll say like the ramp or the onboarding plan. And maybe there's a timeline or something like, I don't know if they're going through all SIO first and then academic career. I mean, maybe, maybe Kirk can, can respond to that. So we have a sense of timing too. Yeah. Could you throw that in the COP, Laura? I don't have it yeah. on my, yeah. on my teams. And is it fair to say that Kurt would be the, well, I think the COP channel is, I think, cause then we all get the answers. Yes, 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 yes. But Kurt's our kind of our POC for onboarding onto this RMP app. Is that fair to say? I, that is my understanding at this point, yes. Okay, cool. And could you add me to that? I, I'm not, I don't see it in my groups. Yeah, I'll definitely, yep. Thanks. So um, it, I can still address what I thought the original question was that I see in the chat, um, some interest in that. So um, when you are when you are billed for that recharge, the expenditure type will always start with 770000, the right number of zeros. Um, and so in your managed project cost screen, you can uh, filter starting with that, that account code, or you can use the advanced search and says expenditure type starts as. And that will display all of those um, recharge expenses. You also can filter by the organization that billed you, right? That expenditure organization would be, um, you know, ITS, let's say for NGN or, you know, for bioservices or Qualcomm Institute. Um, so you could also uh, sort, um, search or sort or filter um, by that data element. You also could do the same in the project cost detail report. In terms of uh, drill down, um, the recharge units uh, provide the original reference information and expenditure item comments. Those, both of those fields are available for recharges to use to provide information about that recharge, but ultimately you would have to go back to their system for additional details. So um, that's, that's really up to the recharge operation for what data elements they, they pass through. I don't know that there's any kind of documents that they can pass through though. It's just data elements. I think bookstore maybe actually has a link that they pass that then you can um, go straight from the expenditure to see the, the additional detail. Okay, I have a question about, I just want to confirm my understanding of how I should be managing some resources on the GL level. So I need to record the revenue at a fun fin unit project level, right? So I'm recording the revenue there, but it doesn't get spent out of that location. So I need to sweep those balances at the end of the year. So I'm going to re re record the revenue in a four account code. And then when I go to do the transfer, I'll do a journal that the, in the transfer happens in those seven account codes. Is that right? Yeah. But can I ask okay. a silly question, Jessica? Yes. Can you not record the revenue where you're going to spend it? No, because it's it's for reporting, right? It's for this reporting that we've been worked on, working on. So I have to report that. Yeah, for ticket okay. revenue, I have to report it under the sport, but okay. we don't really, we sweep it all back and then we spend it on something like a capital project or something. What an efficient way to use your time. <laughs> I okay. like it. I like it so far. Okay. I mean, uh, yeah. But it, I, would, I will say, since we have a large audience here, it is really important to understand that in Oracle, we really want to post things where they belong. All this moving stuff around makes things very difficult because Oracle is very transaction based. So that's all I wanted to say. Go ahead with your question, Jessica. Well, that was that was the question, uh, just yeah. confirming that that is an acceptable way to do it. So really, the, throughout the year, yeah, the, so there'd really just be one transaction to sweep the balances at the end of the year. Okay. 
but okay. I will think yeah, so was, if there's a better way to do that, Melissa. It will, but, be, a fun, it will be a fun balance transfer. That okay. is correct. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Good morning. I have a question. And that is um, in the PPM webinar, we learned that Oracle recalculates. Not charging you from the that Oracle recalculates okay. transactions and okay. no, it it. cost okay. distribution lines. Okay, um, <laughs> thank you very so much. My question is regarding, could you give a little more clarification? I think it was Marissa that had mentioned this recalculation and creation of new cost distribution lines in Oracle, effectively updating the accounting period. You, you phrased it perfectly. So. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure what else, but um, uh, how else can I help? Okay, so I think I, uh, I was in a meeting yesterday where they said that if you were to download those costs in the cost, uh, the Oracle cost, the project cost module, um, okay. you would see the updated accounting period. However, if you were to use the, the two reports in reports.ucsd.edu, the project panorama and the expenditure details, that it would show the original accounting period and you would want to be using that. I hadn't, I didn't confirm this myself, but this was shared in a meeting with me yesterday. And so I kind of okay. wanted to just get a better understanding of how this, I, I mean, I know there's the original expenditure item date, which is fixed, but then there's the accounting period. And I just wanted to just sure. see how this I'll, I'll, I'll do. I'll do my best, right? So, um, so this, um, and I'll, I'll kind of recap it in case not everybody um, uh, was there on, listened to the webinar on Monday. So this is in regards to, there was a, um, we put this in the digest, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, and then um, included it in the webinar on Monday as well, where in Oracle, so within PPM, when you're looking at the manage project cost screen, there is a, a field that says accounting period. That accounting period, I'm, um, I recommend thinking of that accounting period as the kind of a quotes here, most recently accounted period, okay? Not the quotes original accounting period. Um, and so what that means is that if there's a cost that um, was initially charged last month, and now this month it's recalculated within Oracle for whatever reason, there's Oracle has about four different reasons that it can recalculate a cost. When it does that, it, it creates new accounting distribution lines. Hence, those new accounting lines are now in this period. That date is what shows up in the manage project cost screen. And so, um, so in a way, it really kind of depends on what data element you're looking for. But I think for UCSD business, and especially for sponsored projects, we're generally caring about the original accounting period because that's when we want to say, when did I first buy this thing, right? When, when, could, when should I be billing for this thing, right? And so um, that's why I really suggest using this quotes original accounting period. Um, and I have uh, reached out to the BI team to really make sure that where we can include both of these dates that we that we do, um, otherwise that we can you know make sure that we're in sync with what date we're actually displaying in the different reports. Thank you, Marissa. That was very clear. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Thought it was clear. <laughs> Marissa, this is Becky. How are you? I'm good, thanks. <laughs> um, I just wanted to try to get a little understanding of what you just said. So I've been trying to use reports.ucsd.edu uh -huh. rather than going into the module, right? And is the original expense date not showing up properly on the reports? Do we have anyone on the line from the BI team? Like is Eva or anyone here? I'm here, Marissa. Oh, good. I, 
I only know what's showing up from the UI, from the, the dashboard of project costs and the BIP project cost detail report. Are you able to, to speak to the other reports? Yeah, so um, we just actually, Maruthi put together a list of all the PPM reports that use accounting date as a field. There are two kinds of accounting dates, which you just went through. There's the like original accounting date and then the, um, the updated accounting date. I forget what it's called, but reports are not consistently using the same accounting period um, across all of the different PPM reports. So the project cost detail report is using that updated uh, accounting period, whereas project balances with expenditure details is using the original accounting period. So we're going back to every PPM report and making sure we're using that original accounting period. Um, but in any report where it's a transaction kind of level uh, report, so like the expenditure details page of the project balances with expenditure details, we're including both. Um, I can, I actually just updated that one so I can show you where that is. Hold on one second. So glad Eve is here. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. We stepped away for a second, so I was like, <laughs> I hope they do not call on me when I got back in time. So Eva, do you know when you, um, when it's possible to have like all the reports using the same dates? Yeah, so um, I'm not the developer on all of the reports. It's uh -huh. actually me and another person. Uh, I don't know what the timeline is, for example, on the project cost details report, but we just came up with a whole list uh, this week and hopefully they'll all be synced up by next week. Um, but I, I should check with that. Okay. Developer. Okay. Um, okay. I'm going to share my screen. Um, okay. So this is the project balances with expenditure details report. Mm -hmm. This expenditure details page is going to show you both accounting periods. The rest of the report, just like, uh, all other reports are going to be updated to do uh, is using the accounting period, the original accounting period. And I'll show you the two different ones right now. Okay. I can't guarantee you we're gonna find a transaction where it's different, but um, I can at least show you the two fields. Yeah, I use this report a lot. I'm biased. I really like it's it. It's actually one of the it's one of the fastest running reports. I'm not sure why. Why, as opposed to the other ones um, that don't run so fast. There is not, um, Marissa. Is this a project number you were giving in as an example that has two different accounting periods? Yeah, it's okay. with. Um, oh, look, and Jillian gave one too. So. Um, the reason that this one is fast is because behind the scenes with these parameters, there's nothing fancy going on. Um, in other reports, we'll say we want to look at the project manager, task manager, and PI, all of the report or all of the projects they're associated with. That requires some kind of like fancy SQL code behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. There's nothing fancy in here. Okay. Um, um Okay, let's see. So here we have the accounting period name. This is the original accounting period. And then the receiver fiscal period is that like kind of new updated accounting period. Okay. So the first uh, one's the original. We pay attention to that with our sponsored projects. Yeah. And then the other one is when just something takes place in Oracle that it adjusts that expense somehow. Right. And I believe that's what the managed project cost screen is using, right, Marissa? Managed project cost screen is using that, um, you know, most, most recent. Most recent. Okay. Yeah, I think I need a Putting quotes a around little. that, right? Because it's sort of just my way of, of explaining it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, I didn't change the name. This is the right. Oracle, like, official name for that. What are we calling it? Like, the... Um, mm -hmm the updated yeah. whatever this, Most is, this is the official. <laughs> yeah Most yep recent. so the the first one is the original and then the receiver is the um current the <laughs> most yeah. recent mm -hmm. so this is just the official oracle name i didn't even change it um okay. but maybe what we can do is also put in the kva for this report and any other ppm reports that the accounting period name is the original one and receiver fiscal period is the most recent accounting period 
I don't think I went far back enough to see a case where there's where it's different. Where these are going to be different, but this is where you would see that difference is between these two fields. Okay. Thank you so much for um, taking the time to show that. Yeah, no problem. But the expenditure item date on that report I noticed is different than what you had in those first two columns. Yeah, and I would assume exactly. the expenditure item would be the same as the first column. So that kind of- No. So the expenditure item date is the date something was incurred. So, so well, like when you, um, so it was the date that it occurred and not when it posted to the ledger. Okay, so then the first column is supposed to be when it was when it was officially when it first posted to the ledger. Correct. And the second column is when it may have had some updates. Yep. yep. Okay. It, sh it shouldn't be super common, but um, since it can happen, it's okay. like okay, we need to make sure we communicate this and okay. and uh, clarify what it is. Okay. Hi, hi, Marissa. This is Kathy. Um, is it possible to keep that screen on? Because I have a question that's related, obviously not about that project, but in terms of completing um, the Sparkum FER, um, if we have the expenditure item date that's before the end of the project period, however, there's been changes, so then it reflects like March or February or April um, in the accounting period. Do we account for that cost um, in the pending, or do we trust that that cost has been captured already uh, in the appropriate month uh, prior to the project end date? Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 FERS should be pulling in the original accounting date. Got it. Thank oh. you so much. Mm -hmm. And if you're ever wondering, just reach out with your account note or put it in the note or something like that and say, I'm not 100% sure where this is. We can work with you on that. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Since we are here, I do want to quickly note a couple of cool new things that have happened in Oracle. Um, one of them is the Concur team has started bringing in for, um, for invoice numbers in Concur. They now bring in the person whose key card it was or whoever whoever was reimbursed. Uh, so that's kind of cool. And then we also have the person's name under this line approval requester. Um, and I'm not gonna drill down, but this will take you to invoice details. I'm, I think it has to have ha uh, been approved after March 23rd is the date. I am gonna click on it. <laughs> um, but pretty soon this invoice details page, uh, they're going to retroactively attach all of the receipts associated with it. So right now there's no attachments. Um, but for anything that was approved after March 23rd or 24th, you'll start to see the receipts here. So that's kind of cool. Um, um, Eva, then, do you mind repeating what you just said? That it was, uh, it came, I was a little distracted. Could you just start again? I'm sorry. No. Yeah, so the Concur team, they've updated, uh, they've done some ad additional integrations uh, with Oracle. So now the invoice number for like this, this concur expense actually has the P card holder's name in it. Uh, and then if you click on this, it'll take you to the invoice details uh, pretty soon. I think it has to be for uh, transactions that were approved after March 23rd or 24th. You're gonna start to see the receipts, the concur receipts as attachments here. I know they're working to like retroactively add it to previous expenses. So this was February 26th, that's why we're not seeing it. Um, but pretty soon we'll we'll get to see those receipt attachments there. Um, seeing the chat go off, but Eva, I can't do actually. Do you know if it's um, just the receipts or also the report, the concur report itself? Mm, good question. Good question. I am not sure. I'm having trouble finding an example from after March 23rd, so I can see what it will actually look like. Um, but I'm not sure if it includes a report or not. That's a good question. There, it did go out in the um, digest on Tuesday, so there might be more details on that announcement there. Thank you. I, I did have one question. Um, this is Rebecca, back on the accounting dates. Um, so I'm, our department is a little behind on recharge billing, so I'm doing some billing from uh, like November of last year. 
Um, so I'm putting that as the uh, expenditure date, but will that, so would that be in this like project panorama ledger view with a November date or would it be a, a later accounting period like the most recent one since we're actually doing the charge now? Uh, it's, go ahead, so if yeah. you if you bill it right now, so let's say you let's say you build your file today and you load it today and it's November billing. I would expect that your expenditure item date would have a November date, but your okay. the accounting period would be uh, I, I hate that it's today. It would, you know, it would be March or April. Right now, both oh, ledgers okay. are open. Right. <laughs> All right, I see that now. Okay, that thank sense. you. Yeah. I have some follow up question with regards to like that situation. Um, so <clears throat> our department had to do a lot of remapping of our chart of accounts because our projects spanned across multiple venues, which violates kind of the rules of a project. And so we closed all of the original projects um, and the departments are now using new projects that are specific to their venue. And when campus departments are lagging behind on recharges, because the expenditure item date predates the closure date of the wrong old task number in a project, it still posts to that task because I don't know if it's the expenditure date is all that matters in terms of like activity or not, but um, we've been having issues with expenses charging to old tasks um, that we aren't using anymore. And now we have to like constantly monitor closed tasks. And I wasn't sure if the campus was having, instating any kind of rules about like how to date things so that that doesn't happen for departments. I don't know if there's any information on that or if we're like the only department that's experiencing this. I was in a different meeting where someone else was talking about this and someone from, I think GA was saying that they were aware of this problem and there was a couple units that they knew about this and they were going back and retroactively fixing it. But um, then that person in that meeting asked to like have their projects and fin units, um, like he looked at them first. So I don't remember who that was and what meeting that was. I've been in a bajillion trainings, but I, I do think there is some sort of awareness around it that maybe um, someone else could speak to. Yeah, because I see like this particular fiscal year, since it's all one big learning curve, there being kind of a lot of, kind of just late recharges that wouldn't normally continue to occur once everyone's used to the system. But I mean, I think about situations for our department where uh, like facilities management doesn't close a work order maybe quickly enough. And like the next fiscal year, they'll try and charge us for services that they provided in the prior fiscal year. And if they have an outdated chart string that like no one in our department is currently aware of because we didn't realize we weren't charged for this, then suddenly kind of erroneous expenses will be <clears throat> charged to tasks or projects that were tasks in projects that were not supposed to be using. And I don't know how to like properly uh, instigate or it, like instate cross checks within our department to make sure that we're monitoring old projects and tasks. Cause in the old system, when you closed an index, nothing more could charge there for the most part. So I'm not aware of whatever problem I think Rebecca you were mentioning, but Kelly, my question to you would be uh, whatever expenses are hitting there, I would assume need to be updated on the front end of whoever's charging you. So like if it's UC PATH, you would have to update it at PATH. If it's a recharge, you would have to let the recharge unit know that, uh, to, give, to give them the correct COTAF now. Um, so I would question what is hitting that those tasks that you are no longer using and how do you update with the source that's charging you there? So we do try and do that as often as possible, but we don't have visibility on like work orders that someone in the department may have opened with FM last year as like a central business office because there's no um, encumbrance or commitment on the ledger for us to know about that. And perhaps the employee who uh, originally requested that service be taken care of 
didn't realize that like it wasn't charged or they're no longer working with us to tell us that this work order had been closed out and, and actually expensed. And so because as just the business office alone, we don't see that commitment or an encumbrance related to that. There's only so much that like we can do. Um, and then there are just delays. Like if you go to the bookstore and you try and recharge something um, and they just don't charge you for like a month or two or um, occasionally like what, a housing and dining uh, area will have something that you need to charge you for a little bit later than you expected. You don't, I, we're, it's difficult to keep track of really small receipts like that, um, especially as a business office for an entire VC to be able to know every single source we have to go back to. Um, this is Janet. I was gonna pipe in about the facilities management comment um, <laughs> that was mentioned. And I had a similar situation where one of our projects is no longer, well, we haven't inactivated it yet because we're hoping down the road we'll get more money. But for the time being, um, FM had charged from, as I turned out, prior to COVID and everything, uh, work orders from before. And so they're showing up and they're overdrafting the PPM, you know, the current project or the project. So I've had to move it, but there's a contact person that's been great. Um, her name is Caroline Figueroa. And I think I originally connected with um, them and Gina Marjo, M-A-J-O-R-O-S-S-Y. Um, it's at the WSC at UCSD.edu is their email. And I've been able to get information about what they're charging or you could probably inform <laughs> them maybe. But like you said, if you don't know what's gonna hit and where it's gonna hit, you, you, you can't proactively uh, catch it before it happens because you don't know what's still pending in, in FM, right? And like, it's not all of the time. We don't have like expenses like that every single month, but especially with like the project cleanup, we've been having right. difficulty with that because like stuff like that or like NGN seems to be getting recharged to us a couple months behind now. Yeah, um, that runs in arrears for sure. Mm -hmm. the end mm -hmm. But anyway, I was just going to say for facilities, if you did contact WSC at UCSC.edu, maybe they can do something or help you out um, for any facility, late facility charges, or you can inquire with them maybe. Just a thought. I have a question. Is there somebody that can show us, um, like, I just wanted, this is, this may seem really, really basic, but um, we're going from working in the PPM to working in the GL with our revenue driven accounts. And how do I figure out at the project fund level, what, what the balance is at the project fund level? What is the best place to get that information? Uh, can you repeat that one more time for me? How do I, how do I figure out what I have as a balance to spend at the project fund level within the GL? So I'm used to looking at it in PPM, but now we're having to go and um, look at the GL for that information. So how do I know where to find, where is that information? Julie, that's the million dollar question right now. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm actually going to crowdsource this one because I believe there's an EBS replacement and I don't want to speak to it because I don't use it, but okay. I think that's what people are using. If anybody wants to confirm or deny that. I have well, seen that. <laughs> so, that. Go ahead. No, I just, I, um, I didn't know if the, um, I was thinking the general ledger uh, transaction details report um, might, might help as well. But then on the EBS, Melissa, I wasn't sure if you were talking about the one that's out there for CBO or the new one that they're working on right now. Oh, I didn't know there was a new one that's being worked on. 
Okay, so the new one is is really just uh, PPM based, so not GL uh, based. So that's uh, why I was like, you know, but I didn't know if I just tuned out for a second there, you know. <laughs> and then Jessica in the chat um, says that she uses the uh, Projects Panorama, the tab that has general ledger and sub ledger transactions. Okay. Oh, is there going to be any assistance as far as um, when we move, when we have to remap from project task to a project task one level? Um, because, and this is all due to the fact that we aren't able to push any of that, that revenue into the PPM. So now we're having to, to remap some of our project tasks. Um, that there would obviously need to be retroactive transactions. And is there going to be any assistance like um, uh, centrally as far as actually moving transactions? Or are we going to have to go in and do DRs within UC path and um, line by line um, direct trend retro transactions within PPM? Yeah, I can I can speak to that, Julie. So um, for for departments that that choose to I'll say flatten your structure, right, to move tasks to projects, um, we are working on a process right now that we should be rolling out within about the next week, actually. Um, I'm not going to give a specific date, right, because we're still pulling it together, but um, hopefully we can announce something within the next week. And the idea would be that we um, would provide you a, you know, a spreadsheet or something for you to indicate which tasks do you want to elevate to be projects. And then systematically, we would create those new projects and then move all of your transactions um, from that prior task to your new project to task one. Oh my gosh, that would be so helpful. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. So we're, we're working on that. And the idea is that, um, you know, kind of the timeline we're working on is I'm hoping to get this out within the next week or two, um, asking for data back um, uh, by the end of the month and then have it all processed by the end of May. That's so we're working on a little aggressive, but uh, I think, you know, hopefully we can, we can do that. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I did want to just um, add one more piece there, just in terms of thinking about strategy, when you're thinking about, do you want to move some of your tasks to projects and sort of flatten that structure or not? Just to keep in mind that, um, you know, projects that you're doing external billing, um, that you're doing external billing on, that can be done at the task level. So external billing through PPM billing can be done at the task level, and that revenue will reflect at the task level, just not in the PPM project costs. So I just want to reiterate that, because um, I know it can be kind of confusing. Um, I had a comment about Julie's situation. Um, is it all right if I share my screen? Fine with me. <laughs> okay. um, we were looking at this the other day, too. So the GL, and I do have another question about the GL. So we, I ran this one project. So right now in the GL, it's showing this amount of, as it turns out, this is the balance. Uh -huh. And then in that other report, the... Um, that project balance with expenditure, that's the negative. It's in overdraft here. And the reason we're saying here, this there's $2,000 that was given by campus to one of our PIs. And so it shows in the GL, right? But it doesn't show in here. But if uh -huh. we, when we do the budget to 2000, uh -huh. let's say here, then this will come out with the 644. You got it. Yeah. So that's weird. So that so this figure in this column here of the GL would be considered a balance if we looked at the GL report of all the transactions. I just ran it for March, but this would be technically a balance that we would could say to a PI, yes, you have six hundred and forty four dollars and twenty eight cents. So if I just run that report for March for a project, uh -huh. what you're looking at there, is that what, that's what should be my balance at the project? Fund? Yeah, I ran it for even months going back. Okay. But through today or March, 
and this is still the balance because these are all balance forwards, mm -hmm. you know, okay. that, they, that bring forward. But that's okay. what I used to always have trouble trying to read this report. And I know yeah. I did a couple of reports before and I sent to Melissa about uh -huh. how some things didn't quite, but I didn't know how to read this. But this was a simple one where there was certain transactions for costs. And then there, okay. I knew there was $2,000 and this worked out. I mean, this right. amount is the balance. If you go here and you put in $2,000, right. 2,000 minus that is the 644. And this is, you know, of course from the PPM, right? Yeah. I don't know, maybe that might help Julie um, on one aspect. Take a look at that and see if it, if it balances. Yeah, yeah, I have been going back and forth between those two things. Right. Yeah. yeah, so as far as the GL goes, though, if you're only looking at the GL and you know you got costs that came from campus or wherever, then I guess this looks like this could be the balance we're looking for. That's what uh -huh. I've always been trying to figure out, too. Okay. So that's a thought. But while I have everybody's attention, I do have a question on the budget and is there somebody who could address the budget versus actual report? Is there anybody? Is that the one that you have up on the yeah. screen right now? Yeah, this I ran mm. for just the month of July. And this is the budget I'm assuming campus gave us. And this is approximately the amount of money we should have for our operating expenses. So this is July only. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that report. Is there anyone from CBO on the line? Is Alex here or anything? Alex or Amanda? Okay, maybe I'm gonna- it Doesn't sound like it. Okay, because it's funny, because this is July, this is August. So July and August, or actually it says August only, but I did August only. And I got, which is two months, you would figure July and August, right? But when I ran a July and August, I got three months. <laughs> it's just very weird. Okay, I'll reach out to CBO. Thank you. This might be a good opportunity to mention the whole way we're supposed to be looking at uh, these reports now. When uh, the, the budget in the GL is the target, I think they're calling it. I don't know. Right. right? And then um, the perform or the, your management is the plan, right, Jenna? Is that right? Right. It's like, it's like bifurcated now. Target, right. Yeah. Okay. Just but when, it up. I was just trying to see the permanent budget in the GL. And I know that they do it, you know, one twelfth each month, they give us money. So right now this is at the zero, zero, zero project, no project number. And then if I use an actual project number, that's where the costs would come in. But I right now was just trying to track my permanent, I wanted to see the permanent budget. And it, it was, it looks like it's working out fine, but um, still had questions about it. Yeah, so that would be budget office. Yeah, that's okay, thanks. I don't know if this is helpful in regards to checking your allocation. I ran the general ledger panorama and then downloaded, exported all of the transaction details. And I did a pivot and you can look at the journal batch name, which will tell you kind of like what corresponding month that allocation was supposed to be for. And for one of the months they had done, one of the batches, they had done several months in one batch. And that may be why it looks like you're getting more than one twelfth of an allocation at once um, because they were playing catch up in the beginning. Um, so I don't know if that's helpful to kind of go back and look at that report, but that the, the general ledger detail report will give you more details on exact transactions that total that, that amount. Okay, I might reach out to you um, if you don't mind. Sure. So I may send send you an email <laughs> thank you
Um, I have a question. So um, it looks like on the merchant account, um, it has miscellaneous revenue and PPM and the, the, the form that we fill out to move the revenue from the bank to the GL does have task as an option when you're um, when you're submitting it. I'm assuming that's going away because you're no longer pushing revenue to PPM. I'm sorry, Julie. I got I got the the merchant file the merchant files and the miscellaneous revenue. But can you state your question again? Yeah, so um, with those accounts, it's a, that's our conference account for the most part. Uh -huh. That's our conference account. So we receive the revenues into uh -huh. the bank, um, and then we're supposed to move them into the GL, and, and it's a snow ticket form. That snow ticket okay. form has a, uh, there's a line in there for the task that you wanted to go to. And so up till now, they've been pushing it to PPM, uh -huh. but now, I'm, I mean, um, it's a miscellaneous revenue when it flows yep. to PPM. So I'm assuming that goes away. So we Correct. need to be considering that. Yes. Okay, the flattening, we need to be thinking about that for the flattening. Yes. Part. Okay. Okay. Do you know about, um, do you know about the same question right along that, um, when you're bringing it in and you need to, so you're not, so if you have something come in through one of those, that's, that's a credit card payments. It's gonna to have to come in as a bulk. It's just gonna to have to come in and as a bulk onto the project. You're not gonna be able to send it by tasks anymore, you think? That wasn't very coherent. Yeah, re restate the question again. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't, uh, let me see. I don't know a lot so, about credit card, but I'm like, I could probably, you know. <laughs> the, credit card, the credit card gets onto the general ledger. And then it gets from the general ledger and you go and get it out of the general one and you put it in your own local and it currently is project and task, but I'm wondering about, I'm wondering about how they're going to handle that. Is it just going to come into project probably now? It'll just be at the general ledger. Okay. So it'll just project. So, okay. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So we can think of it as it's just going to be a journal moving yeah. that as opposed to, um, you know, a, a journal and a, a project cost entry. Yeah, no PPM transition. Okay, all right, that is good to know, thanks. Um, a couple of comments in the chat, I'll just address um, verbally, it's faster than me typing it out, right? Um, so. Uh, Mike was asking about when the um, carry forward transactions are going to uh, be reversed out of PPM. And so um, so right now, if you do create a general ledger budget, sort of taking knowing that that carry forward is going to be reversed. Yes, your balances are going to look a little bit off, almost duplicated, because it's essentially showing that um, carry forward as well as the budget. But when we reverse that out in the next you know, couple of months, then it'll kind of bring that budget balance back into line. So you have two options, either go ahead and include it now, knowing that it, it's temporarily gonna to look too high, or you could create a budget now, and then when that carry forward is reversed out, you could edit that budget to, to increase it again. And then in terms of how that's gonna be done, um, what's gonna happen is that in PPM, you will see, um, you, you will see an entry to essentially reverse that, that carry forward balance out. So if you had a, you know, a positive balance coming into Oracle, so you have that negative project cost right now, then there'll be a new entry of a positive amount to essentially zero that out. But your general ledger, so, and that'll be done within, in PPM, um, your general ledger already has that balance. So uh, we won't be affecting any of that um, accounting in the general ledger. It's just gonna be how it looks in PPM. So when again, is that gonna happen, Marissa? Our goal is by the end of May, um, but at least by the end of the fiscal year. Okay, thank you. Marissa, this is Brandy. Can I ask, so since you're reversing them out of PPM, my understanding was we can also create a budget in the projects. 
if we have multiple tasks versus moving it to the GL under one task, correct? So the, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, I think my internet might've cut out there a little bit, but um, so for general projects, if you create a budget with, within PPM for your general project budget, you can have that down to the task level. No, no changes are gonna be made to that budget. The only change that we're making is that if you have carry forward reflected um, in your project as a transaction in the project cost area, we're gonna reverse that at a PPM but not impact your general ledger balances when we do that. Did I get it, Brandy, or did I not quite get that? <laughs> I guess I'm confusing. I thought we had option one and option twos where our balances would stay in PPM if we created a budget. Yes. So go ahead and create your budget and that will stay, that will stay in PPM. Oh, yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All right, we've got about five minutes. So if there's any burning questions. It looks like in the chat, someone asked me to show them the pivot that I do for the GL transactions. If someone, if you wanna see that and no one else has like PPM specific questions, I'm happy to share my screen and show you. Yeah, please do, Kelly. That'd be great. Okay, sure. Let's see. <clears throat> okay, so this is the GL panorama that I run. And um, usually there's a second section here that will... Uh, show you the exact transactions. And then I export that into an Excel and create a pivot table. And then the CBO will allocate um, under this particular account code. So kind of all of the data that I export gets uh, pivoted uh, this way, pulling that precise account code. Um, I choose the journal batch name here to show me kind of what the intention of that journal was. And if I needed to go look it up later, um, I could look it up by this name. Um, and then I look at it by department, but if you're a singular department and you want to see it um, by accounting period, you could put accounting period in the column um, and get the specific information about how much of each journal was in that accounting period to that venue if you want. Um, and then the, the grand total here. And so these are all of the allocations from them. Um, we have a running deficit here. So this is expected for us. But um, if you don't, you would see all of your allocations here. Um, see if I could just pick one financial unit. And say I wanted to look at this by accounting period, I could put that into the columns and it'll tell me exactly how much was allocated for this journal during this accounting period to this financial unit. Um, and it would be exactly this for, uh, it looks like for January of 2021 from CBO. And you can, if you have other uh, resource transfers that you know are coming in under different account codes, not necessarily from CBO. Uh, there's all of those options here. 
I just narrowed it down specifically to the CBO allocation. Um, since I know that that I think is what pulls into the earlier report that was shown, um, questioning kind of what that amount was from or for. Um, but if you know that you have uh, other revenue or um, any sort of uh, resource transfer from kind of interdepartmental transfers, um, you can look up those account codes as well that you know that they come down um, through. So I don't know if that's helpful, but that's kind of how I look at it or we'll break it up to kind of determine what is calculating a total I see on reports. Kelly, what was your original report you used to generate the pivot tables, please? Uh, I went to reports.ucsc.edu and I ran the uh, general ledger panorama. Thank you. And there are two parts of that panorama. The first part shows your just general ledger balances, but doesn't give you the detail. You have to scroll down all the way to the bottom to the second section where it says general ledger details transactions. And then go to the bottom of that and export, and you'll probably mostly want to export it into Excel, but that will only give you kind of that page worth of information. If you choose uh, export data CSV format, that will pull all of the transactions from that particular query parameters. Great, thank you. Welcome. So um, also I noticed that it was just one account code, so you can, you can narrow that report down by um, putting the account code you want to see in the uh, parameters. Yes. Which I, I found I, useful. I do it for our entire VC so I can look at everything. So I usually export it just to get all of the data and we'll filter it by account code for whatever I'm specifically looking for. Um, but you could also definitely filter your parameters by the account code you want if that's a uh, element on the selection there. It works really well for um, a financial unit that's comprised of three very key funds. And that was the first thing that I did trying to analyze there. It actually has a real convenient thing of having to do payroll benefits and other expenses kind of politely also. It exports a lot of useful data and works quite well because it shows your um, CBO allocations nicely coming in in a pivot table, yeah. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for attending. I think we went over a lot of good items today. And um, next week we have, sorry, so Monday is going to be uh, sponsored project specialized processes. We'll go over fabrications, program income. Um, some award closeout stuff, uh, forget what else. And then after that is everything subawards and subcontracts. So um, incoming and outgoing subawards that has like clinical trials and um, I'm sure lots of other things I'm not thinking about. That'll be next Monday and Wednesday followed by an office hours. Thanks everyone. Um, thanks so much. Laura, I saw that you're recording this. So is that going to be on a website too? Ooh, why don't I? Yes. Well, let me. Please, please. <laughs> yeah, yes. Let me think about how to do that. But yes, I'll, I'll pull this office hours as well. Oh, great. Thanks, Laura. Of course. Uh, I'll probably put it in recorded webinars and make it its own thing like PPM office hours and then just um, drop them there. You yeah, know? That, that, that'll work. Great. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys.